MG was known for decades for its spirited sports cars from Great Britain since the 1920s. But today, the iconic octagonal brand logo symbolises the ambition to become a major player in the global car market. Seik Motor Corporation Limited, the largest car manufacturer in China, acquired the MG brand in 2007. Today, the company is among the seven largest car manufacturers in the world. With their offerings of electric and hybrid SUV vehicles appealing to the masses at an affordable price, will we be seeing MG a lot more on our roads? In today's episode, I have another SUV to play with. It's over here, look at this thing. It's a 2021 MG HS plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. It's the biggest SUV that MG do. Now, I'm gonna cut through the waffle and I'm gonna tell you the three best features about this car, some things that I'm not so sure on, and I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. I'm gonna take it out on a road test and tell you just how this thing really drives. Let's get into it. So let's talk about the aesthetics of this MG HS plug-in hybrid. It's a very subtle look, isn't it? They've gone for, I don't want to offend anyone. They want to appeal to the masses. They want to sell a lot of these vehicles. So if they look, make it look too aggressive or a certain way, then people are going to be put off. And it's, it's a very kind of forgetful design. You look at it, you pull away. It's not a car where you go, would you look at that? Oh, when I see a car like this, I say, would you look at that? It's very forgetful, but it's got some nice features. All right, you've got this nice big grille, and this is the biggest MG badge you will see on an MG, and I like that. This is the exclusive trim, so we've got LED headlights in the front and sequential indicators that go from here to here. That's pretty fancy. 18-inch Hurricane Diamond Cut wheels. There's lots of chrome. Chrome on the door handles, chrome roof bar, chrome window trim. Now on the spec sheet, they said that this is Farringdon red, but when I spec to 2021, it's dynamic red. Either way, I like the different hues you get. It's very pinky. Sometimes it reminds me a bit of a lipstick. And what do we know about lipsticks? They're sophisticated. So I do like some of the shades. Let's come around the back because I like this. This aluminium bumper bit here. Two split tailpipes, a little bit sporty. And there you have it. That's the exterior look. I wanna know what you guys think about the look of the MG HS. Let me know down in the comments below. Right now though, let's check out the boot. Here we have the world's slowest power tailgate. No, I'm joking, it's not that bad. 448 liters of boot space, which I know what you might be thinking, ah, other SUVs have bigger boot space. That they do, but you have gotta remember, this is a plug-in hybrid vehicle. You have gotta make way for the battery, but even though the ZS model, the, the SUV lower down has 470 litres, a little bit more, if you put those back seats down, you'll get 1300 litres of boot space, which is a lot more than the ZS and a lot more space should you need it. And also, look at this. They've even got a little cubby hole here for your charging cables. I love that, great feature. Not all manufacturers do that. Well done, MG. Let's talk about the battery. So it's a plug-in hybrid vehicle we have a 16.6 kilowatt hour battery right here and we're gonna have to charge it yeah you've got some regenerative braking that will go in but to charge it fully you're gonna need three hours and the bad news is you're gonna have to use seven kilowatts because it's not compatible with rapid charging so seven kilowatts in a wall box at home is gonna take you three hours to fully charge your battery and you're looking at 32 miles but MG do say if you're just driving, city style driving, that could be pushed up to 42 miles. The first thing I noticed when I jumped into the MG HS was, wow, the seating position is nice and high, great visibility. But the thing that stood out to me the most was the quality of the materials in this interior. Leather everywhere and red stitching on this exclusive trim. And these sports seats, they've got Alcantara bits on them. I was just like, wow, this is really cool. I love the aluminium panels here and the in the center console. But you know what? I want to talk to you about the three best features about this car. So let's cut to that. Number one has to be the amount of standard technology you get in this car. Have a look at this. A whopper of an infotainment screen, 10.1 inches on this thing, 360 degree cameras on both trim levels with great quality. 
Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, heated seats as standard on both trim levels. A nice big 12.3 inches digital cluster display. Number two, this car is affordable and cheaper than any of its hybrid rivals. Look at the Peugeot 3008, bit of a smaller car, but 40K plus. This car is £32,595 in the exclusive trim. The Excite is £30,595. Even if you went up to a RAV4 hybrid, you're looking at 47K. The Ford Cougar, 33.5K. So for this price point, this car is epic. And if you're a little bit worried because you're thinking, oh, it's a little bit cheap, is it reliable? You've got seven years warranty covering 80,000 miles. So that's peace of mind for you. Number three has to be the space in the rear seats. This is incredible back here. Look at all this room. Look at my knees. And I'm a very tall man. I'm about five foot 11 and I'm still growing. Good head room. And to be honest, I've had this car a week and I've just been coming back here, reading book. Okay, I don't read books, that's a lie. I'm a movie person, but this is incredible. If I was a kid in someone's family, this would be my new best place to be. And here's the real kicker. Look at this, reclinable option. So I can get even more lean. This is the best thing. Imagine being back here on a long journey. Oh, yes, please. Okay, let's talk statistics with this MG HS plug-in hybrid. We're looking at 258 brake horsepower, 370 newton meters of torque. It's a front wheel drive. We've got an electric motor, 90 kilowatts. We've also got a 0 to 60 of 6.9 seconds. That's not too bad. This thing has got a bit of woof. Then we've got a 16.6 .6 kilowatt battery, which gets you 32 miles, which we'll try out a little bit later. But right now I wanna take this thing on some windy roads and check out how the suspension and how this thing handles. So I'm on some, some country B roads, and this is an important thing to chat about because the suspension is a little bit on the soft side. It's all right on the straight A roads and on dual carriageway, but if you are going a little bit fast and you're going around some of these corners, you do get some body lean and some roll, and that's when you start to feel the weight of this car. It's 1,775 kilograms, and boy, you do feel a, that little bit of weight and you are thrown back into your seat and you're like, oh, hang on a minute, I'm going a little bit quick here. So it's a little bit soft, it's a little bit rolly and leany, but just because it's not agile, it doesn't mean it's bad. If you think about the price point and the demographic who are gonna be buying this car, you know, generally speaking, typical families that are gonna be buying this car are gonna be satisfied. You're not gonna be driving this car fast. It's not a performance car. I have a big corner here and oh gosh, no, I'm not going far, I'm going 20 miles an hour. And you can just feel all that weight. It's a hybrid, so it's got that battery. It's got more weight. This is heavier than the normal HS 1.5. We've got a 16.6 .6 kilowatt hour battery in that. And you do feel the weight. But again, the people buying this car, is it gonna be a deal breaker for them? Probably not. Right, so MG say that this HS hybrid can do 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds. That's not too bad, but I wanna feel what that power feels like and what it sounds like. So let's go. A bit slow on the uptake. Oh, I can feel that. It's a bit of vibration, bit of noise. Oh, a bit of revving, and there we go. Whoa, and it, and it, held, it held whatever gear it was in. For long enough then, I think we can agree. But that's not too bad. That's gonna get you pretty much out of any junction without a shadow of a doubt, nice and easy. That electric motor kicks in and just gives you that little bit more oomph. So let's talk about the bad things or, you know, subjective, things that I've noticed. So this thing has heated seats, brilliant plus, but there's no actual button. Sometimes you jump in a car, it's cold, it's winter, I wanna be able to just press the button and turn it on, but I have to go through the touch screen and the whole touch screen is a little bit laggy. Hey, I have to be honest, it's just a little bit too long when you press the button. So to get to the heated seats, I have to press the button, temperature control, that pops up and then I can click it. But also the temperature control as well. I would like, you know, a little twiddly knob just to turn up and down, physical down here, it would work. But again, 
I'm driving along, I've got to move my eyes off the road to go, hang on a minute, I need to put the, the temperature on and turn it on here or turn it off. So I just think it's a bit fiddly and just a little bit niggly as well. The EV button, there's an EV button down here to press that we spoke about. I want one on the steering wheel. I want it on the steering wheel. It makes sense to have it on there. And then the miles per gallon. So I'm doing a trip check right now, a trip check, and it's 55.1 miles to the gallon. I mean, that's good, but MG say that it's 155 miles, well, actually 155.8 miles to the gallon. No, that's just not realistic, is it? I mean, 55.1 is still good, but it's, it's still 100 off pretty much. But it is very efficient with 43 grams of CO2 per kilometer. So again, for a company car deal on the benefit in kind, you're looking at about 11% for the car tax. So there is some pluses. What I have found that this MG HS plug-in hybrid does really well is cruising. Cruising, doing on the A road, 70 on the motorway. The suspension's soft, it's comfortable. The steering is a little bit too stiff for my liking this car doesn't need to be that agile for its price point and the demographic you know family buyers i would like it to be a little bit lighter however it is direct it does what it needs to do but this is a cruiser this mg works so well just kicking back chilling cruising and it's so comfortable it's a little bit noisy this is where i'm going to be honest other evs are definitely quieter and when you're pulling away in lower speeds you can hear that 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 kind of whoosh that an EV makes and then when the engine starts to kick in you it does sometimes hold it in the revs a little bit too long like and you can't you can't take it out there's no manual option there's no metal paddle there's no manual paddles behind the wheel or anything like that so you can't physically change the gear but I think generally speaking for typical families that are going to be buying this they will be satisfied it won't be a make or break it's just you know i've noticed it so therefore you know i'm going to mention it so we've got cruise control on this mg hs and a traffic jam assist tool as well so if i bring this stalk towards me i'll press set turn it on it goes on i can flick the stalk up to change the miles per hour I'm currently in the 40 so well, actually we're on a 60 so I can bring it up to 60 and then also with the traffic jam assist I have a distance tool so I can twist this stalk back and forward and what that does is it gauges distance it slows up it then speeds up depending on how far the car is in front of me and also the car will steer on the road so the lane keep assist comes into play as well keeping the car on the road now you've got to keep both hands on the wheel because you will get a warning if you take both hands off. Now I have a car in front of me, it's, well that was a bit aggressive, but it works, it works. And it's starting to slow down because I have the three bars set for the distance and I have a van in front of me and it just started to brake itself. So a little bit of autonomy there, very simple and easy to use. And so far, it's been great fun. And what a cool feature on this MG HS. One thing I really like on the MG HS is the digital cluster display. I like the style of the typeface, but there's a display where you can see everything working. So you can see the engine, it glows yellow when that's working. You can see the motor when that's working, which isn't the moment. And then you can see the battery at the back when it's harvesting power, going back in, the engine's now working. And it's just a great display to have a little look just to see how everything's, what's going on. And then with both trims, the Excite and the Exclusive, you get the MG Pilot Driver Assistance Pack, which has emergency brake assist, traffic uh, jam assist, you've got lane keep assist, rear collision assists, loads of assists, so loads of safety features there, which is very important, obviously, when you're using this car and you've got your family in it. So that has been our review on this MG HS plug-in hybrid. And my personal opinion about this car is, I think it is a great package for what you pay. £32,595 for this exclusive trim. The interior, wow, I was so impressed. It's comfortable when it needs to be on those straight roads. Is it the most agile? No, it doesn't need to be. But what do you think about this car? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, throw me a like, get subbed, 
and I'll see you on the next one.